Let's just chalk this one up to I disagree with the internet because I can. What? And well, honestly, I really like this movie and I want to talk about it. As far as one of the most anticipated movie sequels in the 21st century goes, this one probably takes the cake. Everyone from adults to children, adults who took their children to see the first one, uh, those children who are now adults who now have kids, and then children who probably didn't even exist during the first one. That's right, I remember when this came out and there were three generations of people eagerly waiting for Incredibles 2. The first movie was a cultural landmark. The second one was apparently a letdown. Some reviews even say that the movie lacked clear direction in order to continue the story onward, even though the director Brad Bird said he really didn't want to make another one. And after seeing some people talk about this movie the last few weeks because some memes have been flowing around about it, I'm under the impression that a lot of people miss the point. That's right, I'm going on record to say that I think that all of the reviews, the years of people doing long video essays, have missed the point of The Incredibles 2. All right, well, maybe that's a little bit much, but we'll get into that a little later. I've heard a few times over the years that Incredibles 2 wasn't as good as the first one. Most of it revolves around the plot being predictable and the villain not having a good reveal, and ultimately it just didn't seem to have that same thing that the first one had. Uh, I've heard some people say that they sidelined Mr. Incredible and so on and so forth, and to be perfectly honest, I disagree with all of those things. I actually think that the villain was more played like an old school villain where it didn't really matter about that and this was more about the heroes and what they were going through. And in fact, Brad Bird, the director of the movie, said a very similar thing in an interview that he did in 2018. But the core of the story in the first movie was not about the villain. The core of this movie isn't about the villain either. It's about the family and what's going on with them. Their reaction to the situation that are happening to them, that's where we live. The superhero part is really a way to comment on the family. The focus of the movie was on the family, and that's something that I've seen in a lot of people's reviews or just hot takes on the internet that they kind of gloss over. They don't even talk about the family dynamic almost at all, and it's something that I keyed into when I first saw this movie, and it's what made me fall in love with The Incredibles too. So I'm gonna make my case about why this movie is actually fantastic in today's modern media and why we should probably have a little bit more movies like this. The movie starts off right at the end of the first one. The Underminer is here and the PARs are going to spring into action, or the Incredibles as we know them. Now, while they're springing into action, Helen even says something about, hey, should we be doing this? It's still illegal for us to be out here. Obviously, she still hasn't let go of all of that from the first movie, even though the first movie did kind of end on the high note and everything was gonna be hunky-dory, but the laws weren't changed and one would think that that would probably still weigh on her as things were progressing. Law enforcement is still highly against doing hero work and obviously this reinforces her ideas when they get arrested. Now, she obviously says in the movie that she wants to keep her kids out of jail because she doesn't want them going out and doing this. And obviously Bob heavily disagrees saying, no, heroes are necessary and we need to have them here. And this was the point of contention in the first movie and it still never really got resolved. It was more of a matter of circumstance in the first movie. After the arrest scene, the family's put up in a hotel and they're kind of on borrowed time and they're also running out of money financially. So Bob, knowing how hard it's gonna be on his family, offers to go back to the private sector to work and Helen, understanding how hard that was on him, offers to go do it as well. Bob says no, he's like, I, I need to do this for my family, and this is where, well, the plot kind of kicks in and Frozone shows up. This is one of those moments where you absolutely could have called it and you probably knew where the plot was going, and everybody says, well, this is one of the big key problems right here. We know where the plot is, there's no surprise, so why am I making the argument for this movie? Why, why if it's this easy for even me to say this stuff, why am I doing this whole video? Well, stick around to the end and hopefully you guys might see things from my point of view by the time we get there. At this point, the plot devices, I, I, I mean business mogul brother and sister, the divorce, come in and offer a job to the heroes for trying to get the heroes legal again. However, based on the statistics, Bob and Frozone aren't the ones to do it, Helen is. Bob is understandably upset about not being chosen to go be the breadwinner of the family, which does make sense, and Helen is resistant to this idea, but they're literally facing homelessness in a few weeks and financial ruin, so being good parents, they both have to do the thing to make sure that their kids have a good life. That's what any good parent would do. As I said earlier, this is another point of contention in the movie. A lot of people say that this was Mr. Incredible being sidelined for the movie, and this was something they didn't like. They, they wanted him out there. He should have been the focal point yet again. But as always, like I said, I disagree with this. 
I just don't. I just don't. I don't think that that's what happened here. As Helen leaves to go on her first mission, both her and Bob tell each other they're both going to be great because they're both nervous about taking on the new jobs that they're taking on. They both have a new challenge in front of them, and it's time to see if they're going to conquer it. The scene right here showcases the strong relationship between the man and the woman of the house. I absolutely love this scene, and it's really where I started to just smile through the movie. The kids are obviously confused as to why their mother's going out now and doing illegal hero work and trying to go fight stuff when she just got done saying it's illegal. And I do actually have a problem with the writing here because Bob isn't able to explain the nuances of what they're actually trying to do to his kids. Even though it's in character for him to kind of get like this, uh, the writing, not solid here. This was actually one of the scenes that really bothered me in the movie after watching it again, taking notes for this video. Later while on mission, Helen is listening to the police scanner with the divorce, and she even remarks how she used to get mad at Bob for doing the exact same thing, kind of reflecting on all of that. This is a great character moment, which shows that she's actually starting to come around more to her husband's line of thinking, and it actually leads into the main theme of the movie still, which is the family, husbands and wives, and their children conquering and getting through the things that are in front of them. They come to understand each other more as the plot of this movie unfolds, and ultimately, that's what I love seeing. After the first day of being at home, Bob starts to realize that uh, maybe it's not such a cakewalk being the stay-at-home parent. Not only is he dealing with not being the breadwinner of the family, but he's also dealing with the kids wondering why their mom isn't home and where is she at and she does it better. And I'm going to be honest with you, as a dad, been there once or twice. And one of the most memorable scenes of the movies that I'm sure we've seen a thousand times at this point, Bob is trying to help Dash with his homework, but because they've changed the process of how math is supposed to be solved, which was actually a direct commentary to uh, the math process in the real world education system being changed. Dash even makes the comment about he can just wait for his mom to get home. As a dad who's kind of dealt with this myself, this is one of the most real scenes of the movies and it makes you motivated as a father to go, no, no, I got this, I can do this too, right? The biggest thing here is that the house has a rhythm. The kids have a rhythm and Bob doesn't know what that rhythm is yet. And that's one of the things about this movie that it kind of shows him growing closer with his kids the whole time. Now this next scene made me laugh because it's absolutely happened to me in real life and I, I just I just busted up. Obviously Helen's on mission, she's chasing down this train and a phone call comes into her and it's Dash. And you hear the dad in the background, don't call your mother while she's gone. And I just, I love this freaking scene. It's it, it's really relatable to me. I it, it just, th th this is just next level. I really like it, they're really putting that parent that parent-child dynamic into this. I think Brad Bird did a really good job here. Next up, I think there was a really good callback to the first movie. Actually, one of the incidents that made Heroes illegal in the first movie was the train incident. I mean, all of us remember that's, you know, people got whiplash and all that stuff when Mr. Incredible stopped it. And now it's actually a train scene that Helen is uh, in and she's got to stop this train from being a runaway train. And honestly, you can kind of start to see here the type of hero stories that Brad Bird is into. Definitely, definitely in the older style of stories before they got absolutely insane and started doing galactic superpowers and all that. After the first day is over and we get through the absolutely fantastic Jack-Jack fights the raccoon scene, which I think was in the trailer for the movie, if I remember correctly, which was just peak, that that scene. I, even people who don't like this movie say that that was just enjoyable, which and I, I agree highly. It's just, it's probably one of the best scenes of the movie. But while Helen and Bob are having a conversation, Helen starts to freak out and say that she's gonna come home and she knew Bob couldn't do this. And honestly, this is one of those scenes too, where if you have been married and your wife does leave for the day and you are in charge of the kids or the day or the week or whatever, the first few times that happens when the mom steps out of the house, they do kind of freak out, right? They're mama bears, that's what they do, they're mothers. They have a connection with their kids that a lot of a lot of men won't have with their kids. It's a different connection and the, she kind of freaks out a little bit. It's not that she doesn't trust her husband, it's just that she she's nervous. She's, she's not home, that's not normal for her. And I really like this scene here because again, it shows them struggling with the different parts of what they weren't doing in the first movie. And I just think that that's a really, really good way to show this. Helen goes on to explain that she, how excited she was to save the train and it understandably hits Bob a little hard. He didn't want to worry his wife about anything at the house. So even though everything at the house wasn't okay and it was a little bit rough, it was the first day and he told her everything was fine and he's got it handled. He then lays awake at night mumbling about the math homework and about the kids talking about, well, where's mom and why isn't mom here? You know, 
But what happens next is absolutely awesome. Do you remember in the first movie where that first dinner scene with the family together where Bob is sitting there and he's got the paper and he's like slicing into his steak and he's looking over here and he's like, yes. And she's yelling, she's like, Bob, tell your kids to calm down. And he's like, yes, honey, right away. And he's just, just not there. He's just not present, right? He's just, you know, you know, he just got home from work. His brain's kind of fried you know, that well. This scene right here, I feel kind of complements that in a really, really great way. Now he's being directly challenged with something in this movie that he can't solve with his muscles. Mr. Incredible being put into a problem that he can't solve with brute force. I mean, a lot of what was in the movie, yes, he's a quick thinker, but at the end of the day, he's a muscle hero, right? That guy's got super strength. He's gonna solve the problems with his best weapon, which is his super strength. Well, here, he can't do that. You can't, you can't punch a math book into being correct. I know a lot of us wanted to when we were kids, but it doesn't work that way. The next scene's probably my favorite in the movie. It's a dad who stays up all night. He works to figure out how the new process of the homework is, and he helps his kid. And it's a fantastic scene of a father and son bonding over something that they needed to get done. He high-fived his kid, they got it done, he gets him off to school, and honestly, we don't see a lot of that in today's media. There's a lot of media out there that really don't show strong fathers in the household. Not that they can't do something, but that they're just in a position and they handle it well and they knock it out of the park. And that's something that just speaks to me. I'm sorry, we, I just I haven't seen a lot of strong father figures in modern media. And I really do appreciate this scene for showing exactly how it can be done in more ways than one. Fast forwarding to the conversation with Elastigirl and the villain lady, which at this point we don't know she's the villain. Again, everybody called it, whatever. But fast forwarding to this conversation, she's trying to sit there getting Helen to give in a little bit that, oh, well, didn't you feel like, don't you feel good that you're in the spotlight now and that you're not in the shadow of Mr. Incredible? And right here would have been a perfect moment for Helen to be like, oh yeah, God, I lived in the shadow of the guys, but she doesn't. She looks at her and she goes, I was, I was never in their shadow. She had the perfect opportunity in this movie to do something that I think a lot of us have kind of seen. She could have absolutely downplayed the accomplishments of her husband. She could have absolutely said something bad or negative about him. And she doesn't. She doesn't at all. In fact, she dismisses it outright. That just, that again, goes into the main theme of the movie. And the more I see moments like this in this movie, especially because the, I really, really like movies with that strong core family element, she had the opportunity to trash her husband even just a little bit, and she didn't. And she didn't, because she's secure with who she is. And not only is she, secure, is she secure with who she is, but she's also secure with the man that she married. That's a fantastic wife, if you ask me. Going back over to Bob, he obviously does that cringe scene where he takes his teenage daughter to the workplace of the crush that she has and he tries to fix the situation after he got his memory kind of, you know, in my bead. I got, I wish I had the sunglasses. It's okay, you guys know. They, they, did the, they, they did the flashy thing. Although the scene was cringe, yes, it does, it does play into the trope that fathers aren't exactly the best with romance and understanding their teenage daughters and this is one of those scenes that although it doesn't go well and it hits Bob really, really hard, he's down and out after this one. You know, he's just, he's, he's trying to make sure that he can be there for his kids so that way his wife can succeed, his kids can succeed, and he can succeed. And he, he's just struggling with this a little bit. And later that night, he's on the couch, he's tired, he's worn out, and he tells his daughter he just wants to be a good dad. And in yet again, another fantastic scene that I freaking love, the daughter could have said, you don't understand me, you don't get it, you never did get it. She doesn't. She looks at him and says, you're not a good dad. You're a super one. Again, I hammer home all these moments because this is what I saw when I watched this movie. This is what, this is what captured me when I watched this movie the first time and why you know, a few weeks back when everybody's throwing around those memes talking about this movie negatively, I, I didn't get it. Especially with a lot of the guys that I know who talk about being strong family men. It's just kind of messed with my head a little bit. Throughout the rest of the movie, you see the typical superhero antics play out because, well, we're definitely in the third act and the third act, well, it's superheroes, so we need to have some of that in there. Bob and Helen and the kids conquer the task in front of them. They grow closer as a family and overall, they become stronger and better for it. To summarize the point that many of the 
cynics may have missed, The Incredibles 2 isn't The Avengers. It's not about superheroes saving the galaxy. It's not a feminist message to put the strong guy husband on the back burner for girl power. And it's not a movie where the bad guy is the point. The Incredibles 2 is a movie about a family that's going through what families go through, and they just so happen to be superheroes. Coming out in 2018 when the MCU was at its all-time high and the superhero tropes were just getting more and more repetitive, the world forgot about simple things in movies like family values, perseverance, and not every problem can be solved with punching and kicking. In fact, it tends to be a very bad thing when husbands and wives solve their problems with punching and kicking. I think the reason that this point gets glossed over so much is because in modern movies, they put such a heavy point on the villain in the movies and how the villain has to be this perfect archetype against the perfect archetype of the hero. And they kind of forget that a lot of stories and a lot of hero stories, especially older ones, like the ones Brad Bird, you, you can see in his movies that he likes. Yeah, those stories were about the hero getting through the day, not necessarily the hero conquering the villain. The villain was just an obstacle in the way of the hero getting through his day. I get that this movie had its issues with the plot and the villain, but I never really cared about the surprises in the movie because I was so surprised to see a movie come out in 2018 with such strong family values, where the husband and wife respect each other, where the father is respected by and looked up to by his kids. Too often in modern media, we have this trope of the found family stuff, where, oh, my family sucks, so I'll just go on this adventure, and 24 hours later, I'll be calling these people my family, which, mm, not exactly a message that I really enjoy in modern media. The Incredibles 2 goes against the grain in a lot of modern media, and at least for me, I feel like it kind of rebels against a lot of the modern day tropes that have just been really played out lately. All these are the reasons that I think The Incredibles 2 is the best family movie to be released in the last few decades. After rewatching this movie, I have a greater appreciation for what Brad Bird, Brad Bird put into this. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I would absolutely love it if you would share your thoughts with me. And if you guys would like to support the channel, please do go check out my merch store. I've got some brand new shirts out there. They are I Support Indie Creator shirts because I do support indie creators and I do try to support them as often as I can. And as always, thank you all so much for being here and checking out this channel. I really couldn't do any of this without you. You guys definitely keep me motivated and keep me going to keep pushing out videos that kind of challenge whatever I feel like challenging. So as always, thank you again for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.